Can you hear me well? Great. So I think uh, we should start. And uh, let's just ensure that uh, you're in the right room. I'm going to talk about uh, using uh, integrated development environments with uh, PHP and Drupal in particular. First of all, a couple of words about me. My name is uh, Valery Lurie. I'm working for a company named Trello. Uh, we develop a distribution named Able Organizer, which is built for building online campaigns like events, donations, and stuff like that. Uh, if you will have troubles reading from screen, there is a short URL uh, for SlideShare so that you can open the presentation there and read all the links and text there. Feel free. Uh, if you want to find me online in practically every place like Facebook, Skype, Gmail, uh, Drupal.org, IRC, that will be Valdebold. That's my nickname. Sorry? That's a, that's a long story. I can tell you later. <laughs> Talking about IRC, uh, I appear there approximately once or twice a week uh, when we have core contribution hours. And uh, if you don't know what it is, and if you will be here on Friday, I really advise you to visit uh, Friday Sprints. Uh, there is a community booth uh, in the booth space. Uh, you should go there and you should go uh, and visit Friday Sprints. It's really fun. First, let's talk about uh, what the session is not about. Uh, the session will not give you exact answer what is the correct environment for you, what tool you want to uh, go into to use, and there's definitely no uh, one-size-fits-all. I think all uh, IDEs that I'm going to review today are really good and they have a really good long history of development. They're mature tools. Uh, it really depends on you. What uh, properties of a uh, development environment is important for you? Prior to making this session, I have uh, created a, a small popularity contest among Drupal developers. And this is a result. And I think that uh, today my task to review most popular uh, development environments for PHP and Drupal is much easier than it can be like five years ago because uh, some tools are disappearing from the market and other tools are joining forces and really we don't have that much options to choose than we, have, than we had uh, five years ago. Uh, for example, we can't actually count Aptana as a separate player in PHP IDE market. It's joining forces with uh, PDT, and PDT itself also disappears from market, and it's now maintained by uh, Zend Corporation, uh, so that there is no separate link to download PDT from Eclipse.org, which is based on. Uh, instead, you're guided to download PDT from zen.com's uh, site. But as you see, the most popular tool is PHP Storm. Uh, there are reasons to choose PHP Storm, obviously, and I will talk about that a little bit later. But other options that are popular in that contest, which are NetBeans and Zen Studio, are popular also. Uh, and as you may notice, there is a relatively big bar, which is called not using ID, and another relatively big bar called other. And uh, this not using ID is mainly a sublime to editor, which was an interesting result for me. But uh, this is the result of, the, of this contest. 
Uh, I can understand that because Sublime 2 is something in between plain text editor and fully blown uh, IDE. But I think that it lacks uh, several properties that define integrated development environment as itself. Because the main word in IDE, which is integrated development environment, is the word integrated. We have much more than a uh, text editor, even if it is very good text editor. <coughs> the second question in my contest was uh, if people are using debuggers. And the uh, result was pretty much yes. Most people are using xDebug. Uh, some people were using Zen Debugger, and that is a really interesting result because there are less people using Zen Debugger than people using Zen Studio. It doesn't make sense to me because I think that Zen uh, Debugger is the reason to choose Zen Studio, but we will talk about that a little bit later. So, uh, what tools I'm going to talk about? The most popular choice of uh, PHP ID is PHP Storm, last version 7. There is early release of 8, which is coincidentally will support Drupal 8. Then I will talk about Zen Studio, last version 10 and NetBeans, last version 8. We will start from free one to pricier options. Uh, so the cheapest options is NetBeans, which is maintained by Oracle Corporation, written in Java, is free. You can find the download link. Uh, this tool is available for all major operating systems, Windows, Linux, Mac, Mac OS. And uh, it has kind of very unique support for Drupal. Uh, and this support is different from other tools. There is a project called NDDT, which stands for uh, NetBeans Drupal Developer Tools. And it allows you to create a skeleton for, you, uh, for your new models. Like you launch that tool, you say which hooks you're going to implement, and that will create uh, all necessary functions with all necessary parameters, which is kind of cool. Saves you a lot of time. Uh, this project is not hosted on Drupal.org, um, but on GitHub. Next tool is PHP Storm. It is maintained by JetBrains, also written in Java. There are different pricing options, uh, including free ones if you're an active uh, member of community and contributing a lot. They have a community support program and uh, you can apply for it. Um, regular license begins from $99 for a year or two, I don't remember. Probably it's $99 a year. It also works on all major platforms. Uh, PHP Storm's approach to work with Drupal is having built-in uh, Drupal plugin. I will show you how it works. Uh, but it was designed by JetBrains and themselves. It's not a third-party plugin. It comes when you download uh, PHP Storm from their site. Zen Studio is maintained by Zen Corporation, also written in Java. Uh, pricing options are uh, approximately twice more than of PHP Storm. Uh, I obviously put here a wrong version for download, but you can find it on zen.com. Uh, uh, this tool also works on all major platforms, but as far as I know, it has problems with recent uh, Linux flavors which are based on uh, Debian. Talking on basically it's Ubuntu slash Debian slash whatever. Uh, the problem is in incompatibility of uh, Chrome libraries. 
So if you're running Ubuntu or Debian, maybe you will have bad luck running Zen Studio. Uh, there is no Drupal plugin for Zen Studio as far as I know. Uh, community support for, for that product uh, maintains a project that is called uh, Coding for Mothers. That means that um, Zen Studio can define pretty detailed rules for how your output PHP code will look like, what will we use for uh, indents, uh, do place uh, square or figure brackets on, it, on their own lines, or it should be placed on exi with existing code, uh, things like that. Uh, if you have read uh, Drupal coding standards, which include also formatting of output code, it is detailed there also pretty well. Uh, so the aim of this uh, project is to define a format, which is stored in XML, uh, as an XML file, which will be 100% compatible with Drupal coding standards. And since this project is uh, running for several years, uh, it's really pretty, pretty well uh, fits uh, Drupal coding standards. So the first question that we will ask, why at all we should use uh, something integrated when you have good options like Edit Plus or uh, Sublime 2, and they all support uh, syntax highlighting and things like that. Uh, the main reason for that is that you want to be more effective. And I used to hear um, from old-fashioned developers that ID is for losers or for junior developers and real people are writing code in VI or Notepad or something similar. Uh, this is uh, not true uh, for very simple reason or for set of uh, simple reasons. First of all, not of all, uh, not of us are superstars. Let's face that. I'm not superstar. And still, I need to work with other people and need to produce my code in a timely fashion. So I need something that will maybe not that cool uh, as a VI editor, but will do something that I need. Uh, so it's all about working more effectively. Like uh, when I write code, I need to see if Exact, uh, result is what I intended to write. So I need to see if it's syntax highlighting. This feature, of course, works in Sublime 2 and in several other text editors. Uh, what most text editors lack is uh, highlighting of syntax errors, warnings about syntax, what can, possibly, uh, what can possibly go wrong, hints about using or unused variables. Uh, I also don't know if there are a lot of text editors or if there are any at all that uh, have code completion based on uh, documented PHP code. As you know, all PHP functions uh, in Drupal code has, has to contain PHP doc uh, description, and that will help integrated tools to uh, on-the-fly generate hints on how to use specific functions what uh, types of parameters, and uh, what can be a return value. Coding style is very important. Uh, if you're used in uh, teams, especially in a big teams, when, uh, 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 where each team member has its own um, coding style, it can be a real mess to understand what happens there because part of the code is indented one way. <laughs> Uh, the rest of file is indented the other way, and it's really hard to understand where is the end of one block and start of the other block. Uh, as I mentioned, all three uh, IDEs have support for Drupal coding style, so you don't have an excuse if you are not writing code according to a Drupal style, if, you, if you're using IDE. Uh, there is a very important feature which is present in paid IDEs, 
namely in PHP Storm and Zend. And I need to tell that uh, when I'm talking about Zend, I'm actually talking about two products. This is uh, Zend Studio and PDT. Uh, these products are pretty similar one to another. They are based on the same code base. Uh, but there are certain features that are present in a paid version, Zen Studio, and are absent in a uh, PDD, which is a free version. Uh, for example, if you're talking about refactoring, this is a feature which is present only in Zen Studio. A very important feature of IDE is project navigation. Uh, if, you ha if, you, if you have seen code base of Drupal 8, you could understand how many files um, this project contains, and it can be really hard, where, uh, really hard to find where the function that you are going to call is defined uh, and what are uh, that, uh, its parameters. Debugging, it is last in the list, but of course it's the it's the very important, uh, it's the most important feature of IDEs. I'm writing it here in the last place because it's actually supported not only by IDEs but also by certain text editors too. These days, when you're working on a Drupal project, it is common when you work not alone but in, in a team, so it is very important that uh, the tool that you use supports version control system, such as Git or CVS or Mercurial or whatever. Uh, we don't produce pure PHP code. We have to work with other technologies like HTML and JavaScript and CSS. Uh, you, ha you have also to execute commands if you're working with Drush. If you're not working with Drush, you should start to work with it, uh, working with it. It's really a useful tool. Uh, you even can use integrated browser and never leave IDE. So you can run Drush commands in integrated shell and see the output result in integrated browser. When you work with others, you need to uh, know what is needed to accomplished before publishing release or before uh, going beta or alpha or uh, whatever. So all tools allow you to uh, maintain to-do lists by uh, writing comments, especially, especially formatted comments. And I have to mention debugging, because debugging is also about working with other people and know how your changes may affect uh, other people's uh, work and how work of other people can affect yours. So let's talk about uh, debug. Uh, when we talk about debug, it can be split into local debug, which runs on your local machine and remove the debug when you're working on, with a code base which is physically located on another machine. A local debug, if, if we are talking about IDE, runs in internal browser. It requires local web server. It requi requires a PHP extension. And basically that's it. Uh, local debug setup is pretty easy and requires only these three steps. Uh, if we're talking about Zen Studio, it has a built-in web server with built-in Zen, Zen debugger. So uh, if you have Zen Studio installed, you have a working web server with debugging enabled, which is pretty easy. You can start working and debugging your code within five minutes from installing Zen Studio. Remote debug, as you may guess, uh, is a little bit more, more complex, but it's also more flexible. You can use any browser, not only a built-in browser of uh, your IDE. Uh, you can work simultaneously with other people, like you can debug the same code or different code, uh, and your colleague can debug other code. 
uh, you can you you can debug PHP even if you don't have a local web server installed. Uh, you still have to install PHP extension on remote web server. But the most complex and tricky part here is establishing connection, uh, connection to remote server. Uh, everything is fine if that's your development server and you can access it through lo the local network and there are no firewall issue. But if you're talking about running some code on remote web server, this sounds pretty dangerous and you don't want to allow that to run from any computer. So you need to set up a connection between your computer with IDE and remote computer which runs web server. And uh, by default, if you're talking about uh, Xdebug, which is the most common uh, debugger used in PHP project, it uses non-standard port, which is 9000. And uh, if you go to your system admin and ask him to open port 9000 for every computer in the internet to your computer, you probably will, will hear no. Uh, so if you get this no, but you still have to run a code on remote computer, and sometimes you don't have other options. Because, uh, for example, we in when there were uh, Drupal developer days in Saget, uh, there was a sprint on Drupal.org uh, improvements, and you can't actually clone Drupal.org on your computer and work locally because it's huge. And not only it's huge, it also has very specific PHP and other programs configurations so that you will spend more time setting it up than actually working on it. So. Opening firewall is not an option, and cloning site local is also not an option. What is the option? Um, here's the link that uh, you should read. Um, the idea of that uh, link is pretty simple. Instead of opening firewall, uh, firewall ports, you establish SSH connection to a uh, remote server. Uh, SSH connection works on standard ports or most sysadmins are okay with opening connection between two computers on SSH ports, so that sounds okay. Uh, and if you're talking about Linux or MacOS environments, SSH program has a routing parameter, which actually allows you, by establishing SSH connection, to uh, establish a VPN connection to remote computer. And that way, you don't uh, your IDE acts as a local program for remote computer and there is no firewall issue. That is pretty cool. So let me show you a short demo uh, with an actual code from Drupal.org how it is possible to set up remote debug. Uh, this example was written with uh, PHP Storm, but it's pretty the same. Well, I don't see what happened there. So first of all, you need to ensure that uh, your project is set up for remote debugging. All necessary ports are open and uh, I actually don't see what happens there, so excuse me. You have to specifically set up a remote host name and uh, mapping between local files and remote files. They can reside in different folders. And the last thing that you need to do is to start actually listening to incoming remote debug connections. Now, before starting remote debug session, I establish SSH connection to remote site, which in our case is uh, Drupal, uh, Drupal uh, redesign Drupal.org. 
that can take some time because this site is not the fastest site. Uh, it's not the fastest server in the world. Now, when connection is established, uh, if I go directly to uh, my browser and start a debug session, I will get a timeout or I will get an output of uh, PHP immediately. <coughs> because I have to enable remote debugging not only on my client side, in my IDE, I have to enable it also on server side. Yeah, here I'm trying to debug this page. By the way, uh, to start a debug session, you can uh, append special parameter to a query string, or you can download uh, bookmarklets. You can just search uh, for uh, startx debug uh, bookmarklet. That will give you pretty a lot of results. So to enable remote debugging in uh, on remote server, I have to edit HT access file, and there are four uh, parameters that, that you have to enable. And after that, if I press debug this page, I will hopefully see a code for, yeah, that's what I will see in the code, and I will uh, be able to track execution of this script. So as you see, enabling remote debug can be a challenging task, but uh, it really pays and it will give you uh, a better control on what happens on your servers. Uh, debugging is the most important feature of uh, IDEs, but of course there, there is not, uh, of course there are others, and uh, no debug is of any use without using breakpoints because execution can be long and include calls for tens or maybe thousand functions, so you need to have the ability to set up breakpoints. Uh, once again, I'm talking about paid versions of uh, paid IDs, uh, HP Storm and Zen Studio. Uh, there you can not only set breakpoints, but you can define conditions that these breakpoints were enabled. This can be pretty useful if you have long loops and uh, you're interested to check what happens in very specific conditions. Then you just enable breakpoint and set some condition in that tape. Uh, in, in that case, I'm just uh, stopping the execution when uh, I'm looking for uh, nodes of type page. Uh, that's all good, but uh, all that I said uh, until now is uh, very generic and not specific to Drupal. Let's talk about a little bit what each tool uh, gives uh, to Drupal developers, but not to generic PHP developers. Uh, by far the best support for Drupal uh, development is in PHP, as uh, in PHP Storm. They have a built-in plugin, as I mentioned. Uh, what this plugin allows is, uh, first of all, it works for Drupal 6 and Drupal 7. There is um, alpha release for Drupal 8 support because, you know, Drupal 8 code base is changing very rapidly and it's kind of shooting the moving target. But still, uh, with Drupal 6 and Drupal 7, if you work with PHP Storm, you can see if specific function is an implementation of hook. If that's an implementation of hook, you can see what is the definition of that hook, where it is declared, what are parameters of, the, of this hook. If you are starting the new function, you just type the name of your project, the name of, the, of your model, and PHP Storm uh, tries to autocomplete based on the list of 
existing hooks in the system. Um, of course, it supports uh, Drupal code style, including deaths, uh, capital cases, and things like that. Uh, there is a pretty good guide for configuring Zen Studio with Drupal. Uh, regretfully, Zen Studio itself doesn't have native support for Drupal. It is built mainly uh, for work with uh, Zen framework, and all it'll all, all its whistles and blows are based uh, on assumption that you will work on Zen framework. Uh, there is a project named uh, PDT Coding Style that works with both PDT and Zen Studio, and it's about uh, a code formatting. Uh, NetBeans has uh, NetBeans Drupal developer tools, which is pretty well described in the link. Uh, that you see on the screen. When I mentioned code hints, let me show you just uh, an example of how it works in PHP Storm. If you see this small uh, letter H on the line on line 47, uh, this is an indication that function project node view is implementation of hook view. Uh, and you can notice several other things. For example, uh, I'm not talking about code uh, syntax highlight, but for example, if you look at variable line code, which is uh, the last parameter of project node view, it is uh, of color gray. And uh, basically that means that this variable is not used in that specific function, which probably indicates a problem. Uh, but we know that it is not a problem. We just have to use it as a parameter for a hook, but it's not used in that implementation, which is okay. But that may be not okay in other cases. So an indication that specific parallel is not used uh, in scope of function can be really helpful. Uh, all IDEs that I'm talking about support for now pretty a uh, close set of features. They will. They all work with uh, PHP versions from 5.3 to 5.5. Uh, they all work with uh, Xdebug. Uh, so Xdebug is the most uh, used debugger for PHP. So why do why do you want to pay for something that you can get for free, uh, like NetBeans, and you actually have a pretty good support and separate project for developing um, Drupal applications. The answer is you probably may be okay with NetBeans and it's a very good choice, but there are several things that can turn you to paid options. And the first thing is conditional breakpoints. As I said, it may be really daunting to hunting something that occurs only on condition like debugging long uh, loops and things like that. Um, second thing that may turn you to paid options is refactoring support, but I know that is not relevant for, this is not relevant for everyone, but if you need refactoring in your project, if you're working with legacy code that you need to change, that you, you, should, account, uh, you should count on that. The reason that you may uh, choose Zen Studio is it's actually that it's, have, it's having better debugger than Xdebug. You can use uh, you can use Zen Debugger with other tools, but you actually need to buy it first. You can't just download it from uh, Zen uh, Zen, uh, Zen site and uh, use it. And if you bought Zen Studio, then you probably can use Zen Studio. There is no reason to use something else. So Zen Debugger is the main reason from my point of view to use Zen Studio. But once again, all three options are pretty stable, are pretty measure, and can allow you to work really effectively with Drupal. That's something that I wish you to do. Um, so this is basically it. This is something that I wanted to, uh, to tell. If you have some 
questions, then feel free. Thank you.